Um, so here's another one. Um, the universal display files is the other thing that I wanted to show you today. And uh, universal display files, the idea here is that we can use our RPG code um, together with this open access technology, that same technology I was, I was showing you, the handler keyword, um, to generate uh, the documents that we find more and more we need for exchanging data between applications um, in today's, you know, sort of modern world. Um, so things like generating XML files, CSV files, uh, JSON files, um, and using those in, in, in situations like AJAX requests or REST web services. Um, so we can dynamically build these from RPG using open access to make it simpler for us. So uh, let's take a look at, at that. I'll show you what, what we can do there. Um, so this, this is also done, you know, with our Profound UI uh, tool. Um, let me just uh, switch over. Now, we, we actually use a different designer, not the, the display file designer that we're looking at here, but rather I have another one. It's a universal display file editor. Um, you can see it looks kind of similar, um, but it does have different options. The idea here is we can interface with any sort of document format. We'll just type it in here, kind of like a template, and then the RPG program can use open access to insert things like variables and stuff into it. So I could just type something like, you know, whatever, some some. XML, for example, I could use as, as you know, here I just type in the XML, uh, you know, whatever it is, and I'm, I'm just kind of making this up. It's kind of a dummy thing on the, on the fly, but I can, I can type whatever I want here. Um, this tool does have the ability to understand what type of document I'm working with, so I can do things like set the document type over here on the right and set it to be, in this case, XML. Um, now it knows that it's XML. You can see that it's doing syntax checking here, like I can do things like expand and contract the, the different tags and stuff. It understands what the format is. Um, but the sort of interesting part of all of this is that I can interface this with my RPG code. Um, so I can still give it a record format name, you know, my record or whatever I want to call it. And I can insert variables from the RPG code. So I can click insert field here and I can, you know, have a field for my program. I can give it any name I want you know, my data, I, I don't know, I'm just kind of making this up off the top of my head, but you know, it could be my data, it could be a character field, you know, we could make it 500 long, we can tell it to trim the data from it when it puts it in there, um, stuff like that, so that, you know, we can build this, this XML document sort of on the fly. And in fact, we still can do all the different data types you're used to in RPG. Um, we could do things like use a reference field. So um, you don't have to, you know, necessarily hard code your definitions in the display. You could use a reference field and get it from a database, like we do in green screen. So we've got all that sort of capability. So it's, it's very sort of um, comfortable, familiar um, to, to us as RPG developers. And, and like Jordan was saying, this stuff is all built by people who um, have worked on IBM I for years, you know, including myself. Um, we, you know, we're, we're very comfortable with RPG, and we've tried to keep all the things that we love about the RPG environment and make them available. So we can build XML documents this way and, 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 you know, write them out. Now, rather than have me sort of make this up on the fly, which, you know, you know, who wants to sit here and watch me make mistakes, right? So <laughs> I'm just kind of kidding there. Um, but, but anyway, um, let me uh, load in a display that I've, I've or I should say uh, an, X, an XML example that I've already written. Um, I don't know, maybe, maybe you've seen some of the talks I've given at, at conferences like Common or RPG DB2 Summit or, you know, any of those, the other sort of um, user group type conferences. Um, I give sessions on how to make web services. So uh, normally in, the, in my sessions, I would like hard code the XML data into my RPG program um, and kind of, you know, write it out that way. And that works, but I wanted to convert that to use this new uh, universal display file as an example. Um, so the way this, this XML document works is there's a couple lines that go at the top that are the same for every document. So I've got those, and I've put them in their own record format called inf header. Okay? Now the idea here is to generate a list of invoices as the web service, right? So you're going to call this as a web service. The, the web service consumer or caller is going to add in parameters that say it's for this customer number and it's in this date range and it's going to list out all the invoices um, for that customer in that date range. It's, and that's just, just an example that I like to use. So this header record is data that would be the same for you know whatever it is. You'd write that out first. Then the RPG program could do another write opcode and write a different record format, in this case called invoice details or in feet. 
Um, and this would be added on to the document we've generated so far. So this, this second bunch of XML is added on to what we had before um, each time I write it. And this way I can write invoices in a loop. So this, this section of XML code will have these variables filled in from the program. Um, and it's just you know added on each time in a loop. So every time I do a write to this record format, it adds this on to the end of the XML document, allowing me to sort of build it on the fly. And then when I'm done, of course, there's a closing XML tag. So that's just a one-liner. And I've got that in a separate, separate record format as well. So I can just do a write to that record format from RPG. And um, there's also an error um, XML tag, just in case we run into an error. Um, so, so I've got all of these different formats all set up in my Universal uh, Display Designer. Another thing we can do with this is we can take input from the web service consumer or even from a web browser. So you can run this stuff from a web browser as well. Um, and so I've got a capability in the properties here called input parameters. And if we look at that, you'll see I've set up some. So in this particular example, I needed to get a customer number um, and then a starting and ending date. So you can see I've set up a customer number variable, um, then I've got a start date and an end date. And you can see that these are all, um, if you will, mapped to RPG fields. So in the URL, I've got, I've got cust that would be in the URL. And then I can map that to a field in RPG called cust. And I can define that however I want. In this case, it's decimal uh, four zero, but I can you know, use any of the regular data types you'd have in DDS, um, including Unicode. Um, we could also do a reference field to get the definition from a database, the way we're used to doing things in green screen. Um, so we've got all that capability here as well. So I build my display file this way. Um, and of course, I save it, which, you know, in this case, I, I just loaded one and I haven't made any changes, so I don't need to save it. But, you know, you would save it and then you would compile it. And this, again, like, like, the, uh, like the previous example, builds the display file. Um, so it's a regular display file object on disk. And again, that works perfectly with your change management software and stuff like that. Um, so. On the other side of this, of course, we have to do the RPG code, and I'll just show you that real quick. Um, obviously, I've, I've already written it. You know, you know, you don't want to sit and watch me code the whole thing, but, but again, um, we've got a display file F spec, um, so workstation F spec, and we've added that handler keyword. But in this case, it is a different handler. It's the universal handler that comes again with the Profound UI product, instead of the one, the Profound UI handler we had before, which was for user interfaces. This is the universal handler. Um, it's capable of doing uh, these, these you know, on-the-fly documents. So in order to get input from the web page, and, and let me show you the web, the, the uh, sorry, not web page, but the, the XML document. So let me show you what, a, that, what that looks like so that you kind of have an idea of what it's doing. Um, the idea here is a web service consumer is going to call this with a URL. So, you know, we've got a regular HTTP URL, and this is just pointing to Profound Logic's box or PL box. Um, and then it goes slash profound UI slash universal to tell it to use the universal handler. And then invlist is my program. And I'll show you how to set up that program in a moment. Um, but we're passing in parameters then of customer number, start date, and end date. So um, that is the same you know, stuff that you saw in the, in the universal designer where I set up those variables. This is how the, you know, the caller would supply them. It just puts them in the URL like that. Um, so, you know, again, this would normally be done from a web service consumer, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm just going to paste that in and run it from the browser um, just so you can see what it does. So this ran my RPG code, um, and it output all that XML, okay? So the way, the way I'm handling that, again, in the RPG code, now that you, you know, have a, a quick sort of introduction to what, what it does, to get that input from the URL, all I have to do is a read. So a regular RPG read, just like we've always done. And that will populate those variables that I set up in the designer, the customer number, start date, and end date. And then this next line is just checking to make sure that they were set. You know, if they weren't, that would be an error. Um, and I can just write out that error XML, which is, you know, the record format that had the error XML tag, just to show that, I, you know, there's an error. So it's very much like we're, you know, the sort of thing we're used to doing in RPG. Except now we're generating these sort of modern documents. But anyway, now that I've, I've got those fields, I can do an SQL statement and get all my invoices in the date range. So I'm looking for that customer number and then starting and ending date. And this is just normal RPG code. Um, but then I'll loop through the results. So down here, I'm looping as long as you know my SQL statement was successful. And all I have to do now, because I'm reading, I'm reading the data into this data structure. So that's that's populating fields in my RPG program. All I have to do to write it out is write that detail 
uh, record. So before the before spinning through the the uh, SQL results, I write the header. During the results, I write the detail record, and then when I'm all done, I'll write the, that footer part of it. And that's how I build it on the fly. Um, so so that's you know it makes it very easy for me to generate a document like this. Um, and, and you saw how fast that ran. I mean that that was you know pretty close to instantaneous. And this is a pretty big document. There's a lot of stuff in it. Um, so it's very, very fast. Um, so uh, with this technology, what can you do with, with these, these on-the-fly documents? Well, of course, here I, my demonstration was XML. This could have been a JSON document as well. Um, so if you're doing things like AJAX, where you have a web page that needs to interact with an RPG program as the user does things, it can do an AJAX request, and that AJAX request could return something like an XML file like we have here. Or if I had typed my data in JSON format, and of course we've also got a document type for JSON, and you can, you know, you can get syntax checking and everything as you type it. Um, and then if I had used that, it would you know, spit out JSON code, which sometimes is, is more useful to AJAX, because AJAX you know, works faster with, with JSON than XML. So you could do it that way if you wanted. Um, so, and not only can we do this to interact with web pages, um, we could actually, you know, go in here and tell it instead of outputting this to the web, we can tell it, you know, to write this actually to a file. So I can change the destination to be like an IFS file name. So that's, you know, that's what this parameter is for. I could write it to a file instead. Um, but what I've chosen in this example, because this was a um, one where I wanted it to be a web service, um, was I told Profound UI to run it. And the way you do that is just by, you know, putting it in a, a file that's included with the product to say this is something I want to map to an RPG program or a, a URL that I want to map to an RPG program. So I'm just going to edit that real quick. You know, I'm just using you know, DFU. Um, but it's just a, just a regular physical file and my invoice list program is already in here of course but it says when slash inv list is, is in the URL so that would be after a uni the word universal in the URL um, I want to run this particular program, and I'm telling it to call this in list C in my test library. SK test is my my test library. If I want to, I can also require a sign on so that you know in order to use it, they have to have a user ID and password. So, so it's very a very simple sort of thing to set it up, but it's a very powerful, quick you know way to make a web service. Um, and and this can also be used with our traditional Profound UI screens as well. So anywhere that our our screens can retrieve from a database file, like on a drop-down list or a chart or a subfile where it can draw directly from a database. You can also substitute, instead of the database, you can substitute what we call a custom URL, where it will call a REST web service. So this allows us to, to interact with that as well. We can build REST web services very easily with the universal display file handler. Um, and that way we can calculate all of our data doing any sort of logic we want in the RPG program. Um, and populate things in sort of a custom way. Okay, so so that is that is uh, the universal display file feature, which um, I'm very excited about, obviously. Um, but now.